It's a Friday. The weekend is here and rest is near. My name is Wallace Scott. Welcome on the show. Too much drama. I've got um, someone who, well, they'll both analyze these conditions for us. And I'll explain to you why they are conditions for me. I've got Femi Adefeso. He's the go-to guy when he goes, comes to basketball in Nigeria. And he's coming come to talk to us via phone. Thank you very much for joining us, Femi, on the show today. Thank you for having me, Wallace. <laughs> And I've got Shayo Gutoe via Zoom on the show this morning. Good morning, Shayo. Good to be here. Mm. Now, Super Eagles coach Genot Raw has included Al Shabab striker Odion Higalo in his 40 man provisional list for next month's 2022 World Cup qualifiers against Liberian Cape Verde. The Franco German gaffer is a huge admirer of the former Manchester United man who emerged top scorer at the 20. 19 African Cup of Nations before calling time on international football. Nigeria Football Federation President Amadou Pinnick in a recent Instagram post hinted that talks were already underway for Igalo to return to the national team. I know it's not basketball, Fabi, let me start with you on this one. It's shameful that at a point in Nigeria we're begging Eyama to come back. It's shameful we are not only begging Igalo, we've already put him on the list, the 40 man list. For the qualifiers, can't we churn out new players? Can't we discover new players? Why should we go back to our vomit? Go back to men who have retired to beg them to come and help us out. I think we have quality in Yeah. I, I really don't know what the right thing is. Honestly, if you have a Napoli striker in your team, you know, you have a um, Polonati, you have an Uruku. Young and young at all. I I wish they were better than not good enough. You guys play the best teams in the world. We came with out. They are not bench women. They are star players. They are winning players of the week, players of the month award. They go of the week and go of the month award. And then we leave all that and we go to Saudi Arabia. It's not a function of lack of talent or not having enough to go to the lion. Is I guess. Uh, coach, and something you dealing with the past and holding on to past day. Okay, now, um, Shayo, um, I think um, Femi has said it all. You have strikers like Osime, who plays in Napoli, in Italian Syria. You've got Ienacho, who's in Leicester, in England. You've got Onoacho, who is the highest goal scorer in his league. What do you need a striker who has resigned, who has left international football to beg him to come back and do what to help who? We have enough strikers in that team already, if you ask, ask my opinion. Well, I, I, I don't want to actually look into that direction. I want to see Genatro uh, trying to you know, save his job here. Don't forget, these players you mentioned, they were all there against um, Central African Republic, which we lost here in Nigeria. So he, he, he wants to actually look for a, a, a short banker now, and Igalo is his man. And Igalo is short banker. You know, he, he loves. Yeah, I mean, Igalo. Igalo's records in. Yes, Igalo's records. He might as well go back and call Martins. He might as well go back and call Martins or Bafemi and the rest. Go back and call. Go back that way and call them. If we are looking for short banker, well, well, Ayegbeni and the rest of them. Well, I, I, I believe, I believe Igalo, Igalo, you know, in the last Afcon, he was fantastic. He was the Ayo scorer, even in the qualifiers for the Afcon himself. So he played under Genatro very well, and I think Genatro knows how to get the best out of Odion Judi Igalo well. So I think he's just trying to save his job. He wants, he wants to, he doesn't want to take um, any game lightly any longer because if you look at it, the game against Central African Republic, Nigeria controlled that game, but they just could not score. And these these players, the Osimens of this world, the Iana Chos, were they were all in that game. So it, it's looking more like how we can you know convert those chances, and that's why he's bringing in the Galo, I guess. Okay, still on the show. If you want my opinion, a good coach doesn't go back to players who have retired from football. He discovers new ones, better than the ones, and make them play. Not go back and beg goalkeepers in Yama, go back and beg Igalo. You might as well go back and beg Aigbeni and Martins, for all I care. I don't think it makes um, um, Gennot Roy a good coach. It makes him ashamed to us all, really, my opinion. Now, the Nigeria Basketball Federation has postponed its election, which was initially scheduled for Saturday. Now, this is contained in a communique issued at the end of the Federation's Extraordinary Congress. 
Now, the move comes after the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development suspended the elections over the leadership crisis rocking the Federation. The Ministry's decision was, however, initially rejected by the MBBF, who insisted that their constitution didn't give the Sports Ministry the right to postpone their elections. Now, Thursday's move by the MBBF, however, saw them make a U-turn from their initial stand, postponing the elections by a few weeks. Meanwhile, the chairman on Do State Basketball Association, Francis Guiri, has faulted the MBBF constitution. According to him, it was the complaints of basketball stakeholders that made the sports minister, Sonny Dari, move the elections indefinitely. Now, um, Femi, Francis Guiri faults the MBBF constitution. Now, the question is, most Nigerians asking now, does the sports ministry in Nigeria have the right to suspend MBBF elections? Doesn't that mean government interference? Well, the interesting thing is, uh, right now, before this um, action was taken, the MBBF was being led by a theatrical committee, which was inaugurated by who? The Federal Ministry of Sports. Because the tenure of the position was over and, well, you know, the president. So we were being led by the chairman of the theatrical committee. We were to go by the rule of law and what is opportunity. So if that has happened before now, we cannot now say they have said they are boundaries because they have now, you know, told everybody to go home so that they can and keep charge of the proceedings because there's so much going on. The, the crisis might just continue if, if they don't take the action of the system. Now the, the, the MBBF have backed down. The Federal Ministry of Sports have had their way eventually now. How will we solve this problem? Is this just, just, is this just to be suspending elections? Let's look for a, 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 a standard way of settling this. Suspending elections yeah. will not solve this problem. What can we do to solve this problem once and for all? Thank you very much, Wayan. That's what I've been telling everybody that gets to uh, the, the way forward is for everybody to come back to that constitution that seems to be possibly before us. Even members of the former board may not have had any privy to the document that was ratified and called the constitution. So even players in the game that ought to stand for it are also standing against it. Not to talk of those that stakeholders who are even yet created as we speak. So, so I think that is what to be dealt with because personally I don't mean and I can say it is government document by all means and purpose. It doesn't serve for the good governance of the game. Rather, it's a political tool, you know, to give some people power, you know, over the body. So, so I think what can be done by the ministry now is, I know they use the word Congress, it's legally, it becomes a ally. Call it whatever. Just bring everybody together. Now, let's look at what are the fundamentals that give everybody a fighting chance. So that when they go to the pools, whoever you do, like you say in local parliament, you take his left to the future, knowing that the document is endorsed by the majority, not just a small set who believe they can use it as a tool to get into office. And I think once that is done and everybody goes through to the election, of course, there are winners and losers. I mean, the winner will take their victory and then everybody can move with the enemy that directly if they are still doing something wrong in doing their progress after that it has been done. So what they do, the elections right now is like clean the hostage. Because the problem is still there and I will just want to move on with the process. Okay, now Shio, let me come to you on this one. This is an MBBF, a basketball federation that has two different heads. One side headed by Tijani Umar, the other headed by Musa Kida. Now, there are supposed to be elections. Ministry says to avert Wala in the future. Let's postpone these elections. What do we expect the ministry to do in the meantime? 
before the next elections to ensure everything goes on smoothly now and in future? Well, it's a pity that is actually happening in uh, in the country presently. And I must say this, that um, he who pays the piper dictates the tune. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the body, you know, in terms of sports, he has, has called it quit on um, elections of, of basketball. And um, it's a sad one now because they've just postponed it indefinitely. Not, not, no dates, you know, no future dates has been set aside. So I think that there is an in-house rumblings that needs to be sorted out first. Then they can possibly go ahead with the election. But without that, I think uh, uh, everything will still be on a standstill. Because this is Nigeria, actually. This thing keeps coming up, in, not just in basketball now, in all sports, in all ramifications. Every, everything here is messed up. Now, um, um, Femi, um, it, it's obvious that um, um, this man involved, Jani Omar, Colonel Sam Amedu on this show last week said that um, the guys who are protesting were disgruntled elements in the MBBF who don't want Musa Kida to move ahead. Now, we have had too many disgruntled elements in the MBBF for too long. How long will this men play, use their ego, it's just ego, to say, I'm going to be the one that is there? Do these men actually have the love of Nigerian basketball as hearts? That's the question this morning. Um, uh well, I, I, I like to see this thing. There is a political side to it, but there is also doing what is right, which is, um, in my own opinion, an initiative side to it. You know, so, for example, we have a detailed say that I want three actual basket titles since 2017, and they've not been paid allowances since 2018. Let's, let's even, even say some people that are man, politically manipulating this process, but if the right things are being done, I think there will be a vote of confidence unanimously to one party. If a league was being run, I think there would be a chair up or a thumbs up for one party. So, so why very easy and you know smooth to say it is this guy that is feeling the straight based on personal how about the other party doing what is right so that we can all point in guys and say we are the ones disturbing the growth and the progress of basketball and everyone can call them out. So so that's where I have the challenge. Let's not let's not play a blind eye on the issues. I call it as political. It is true there are police, there's politics, there's politics going on, but also let's just try and do what is right so that the sport can do. Fabian, I want to thank you very much. You've been able to identify for us that there's so much politics involved in this, too much politics involved. It goes beyond basketball. It's more about politics and men who have a lot of ego. Thank you very much, Femi. Thank you for Thank me. you. Now, what Femi has done for us today is put an insight into the basketball brouhaha. And he says, apart from basketball, there is so much politics involved in all of this. Now we know. Now, Shari, I'll come to you now. Frances Tiafoy came from a set down to stun Greek top seed Stefanos Sissipas in the Earth State Bank Open second round in Vienna. The American overturned a three-love deficit in the deciding set before booking his spot in the quarterfinals with a thrilling 3-6, 6-3, 6-4 victory. 23-year-old will next meet 8th seed Diego Schwartzman for a place in the semis after the Argentine earlier saw off Frenchman Gael Monfils, 7-6, 5-4-6-6-2. Now, Shio, um, obviously, um, Sissipas is getting to be involved in too many opens, and that's why Tia Foy could take him out like that. We see a very strong Sissipas most times, but the man is obviously tired. He's um, registering for practically every open. He will burn out eventually. Yes, I think fatigue is setting in. I, I am actually disappointed. I, I expected uh, Stefano Sissipas to have um, come out tops on this one, but uh, it is what it is. I think um, Tiafo was just better. You know, looking at some of the highlights there, it, 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 was, it was, you know, amazing. I mean, I also think um, Sissipas possibly underrated his, um, his uh, opponent. So 
No, it, 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 it's a nice one. Now he's a giant killer. All eyes will be on him and he's into the quarterfinals. Let's, let's see if he can actually hold this momentum on. Okay, now this is some sad news this morning. May this man's soul rest in perfect peace. His name is Emiliano Sala. Now, the organizers of the flight in which footballer Emiliano Sala tragically died was on Thursday found guilty of endangering the safety of an aircraft. Now, David Henderson, who is 67, was um, convicted after a trial at Cardiff Crown Court. Salah, who was 28, and pilot David Bibotson, who was 59, died in the crash over the English Channel in January 2019. Salah was involved in a £15 million transfer to then Premier League club Cardiff City from French Le Champion outfit Nantes and was travelling between the two cities at the time of his death. Now, Shio, at a point I asked myself, why would Cardiff City want their money back from Nantes, despite the fact that um, Salah died in a plane crash? But somebody answered me and said, listen, the product was paid for and it wasn't delivered. He died on his way to Cardiff City. We want our money back. That went to court. However, the flight organizers have been convicted for actually in, in, in making sure they died because they felt the flight wasn't safe enough. This is all good news for Salah and his family, who have always wanted um, justice done. Yes, uh, good news for Salah and his family, but it doesn't bring back Emiliano Salah's life back. It's a sad one, very sad one. Uh, I think um, uh, more should be looked into it in terms of um, how the crash finally actually happened. Because uh, listening to the WhatsApp message, Salah's, uh, the, the last WhatsApp message he sent, he, he himself um, got to notice that the flight wasn't good while they were on air. So it, it, it's, it's so sad. It was too late before he could realize it and um, he lost his life there. But I hope going forward, things like this should not repeat itself again. Okay. Um, my question would be, um, would it be morally, well, morally right for Caliph to say we want our money back despite the fact that um, they already paid for Salah on his way to Cardiff, Salah died in the plane crash and um, Cardiff went to court, got their money back from Nantes uh, because they said that, well, we paid for a product, it, didn't, it wasn't delivered. Um, Salah did not get to Cardiff, so we didn't get our products, we must get our money back. Sometimes shouldn't there be a little, you know, put a little... Um, humane attitude into things like this. Should we always think about the money all the time? Uh, well, looking at the point of view of Cardiff, uh, you know, don't forget that time, that period we were fighting relegation. And, um, uh, you know, how do you buy a goods and it wasn't delivered to you? I mean, it's, it's, it's just what it is. I think Cardiff, well, if it is going to be moral, uh, partly moral, and I think it's it's business now, and I think um, both both parties should be able to share 50, 50 or, or at least 60, 40 of, of the, you know, bad debt that is involved. So, yeah, but, but, but um, Card Cardiff wanted all their money back. Uh, well, I, 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 I can't I can't really say much on, on how how much they can get their money back, but I think uh, they should get a little so at least a, a fraction or a percentage some out of their money back because he never actually does the jersey for Cardiff. It, it's so painful. I would have actually loved to see him because he was banging in goals for for nuns in, in France and uh, I wanted to see how he was going to save Cardiff off relegation, but uh, they could survive. Okay, let's look at the fact that um, Golden State Warriors have not lost any game so far this season in the NBA. But Joe Morant put in a stellar 30-point performance to guide the Memphis Grizzlies to a 104-101 to overtime win to end the Golden State Warriors' unbeaten start to the season. The second overall pick of the 2019 draft, 22-year-old Morant, secured the victory with a driving layup in the closing moments to give the Grizzlies a 3-2 record and send them fifth in the Western Conference. Next stop for Memphis is a home game against the Miami Heat, while the Warriors welcome the Oklahoma City Thunders. Um, Shire, we might not be seeing too many silverware on the shelf of Golden State Warriors this season. Might not. Um, they've lost their unbeaten record this season already, losing to Memphis Grizzlies. And their next match is on the road against a Miami Heat, which will be tough, a very tough game. And um, we're seeing um, the Golden State Warriors who are going to burn out quickly, losing to Memphis Grizzlies and going on the road to Miami Heat. Hmm. 
no one actually expected them to have lost that that match here just yet. I mean, it was it, a dying minutes win for Memphis. Dying minutes. I mean, they should have just held on and you know, you know, just see, see so how they win. But um, so it is, it is, it is actually competition, and that is what we are talking about. It must be tough. It must be unpredictable down to the end. You never can tell what will happen. And then um, I, I, I'm, I'm beginning to love the jostle for competition, the jostle for places, for sports. In, in on on the conference table there because now uh, uh the, the 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 memphis Braves they are now on the fifth i mean it's it's amazing and and moving forward now to the to the peak of the moment i, I can tell you los angeles lakers also lost surprisingly they lost to uh you know to, to another Oklahoma side who, who, who are not in, in fine form at the moment. But, I mean, <laughs> it's surprising. Even, even after a, a game, they started very well. They were leading, but lost it just right at the end. It's surprising, really, and it, it's good for the game. What well, happens? Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Shayo. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to Thank have you. you. Now, Ralph Laurent has unveiled the new Team USA closing ceremony parade uniforms for the 2022 Olympic and Paralympic Games. The Winter Olympic Games in Beijing are just three months away and Team USA will be ready for the cold. Ralph Lauren designed Team USA's winter look. The American designer has clothed Team USA since 2008. For the 2022 Olympic closing ceremony, Team USA will wear a buffalo plaid booked puffer in jacket, which is made from recycled materials. Aju Evans, Olympic bronze medalist, uh, Bob Slider, Bob, Bob Sledger said the clothes are very friendly. Yep, that's the spirit. Eco friendly, eco friendly cold clothes. Well, that's nice. Well, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa join us on Monday, same time, same station for another edition. It's the weekend edition, Friday. The weekend is here and rest is near. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your hearts, do some sports.